Hey, 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 ladies. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm like, I'm here. I'm excited. It's day one, which I love. I'm just going to check that I'm live, which is also always a good one to check. Um, do, 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 do. Um, and then we are going to get started with the training for today. Um, so let me know when you are here. Let me know when you're live. It's always good to say hi to people. Um, so please, if you are around, give me a hi, because uh, it's always nice to, to say hello. Okay, I think I'm live. Hmm. Um, and if I am live and you want to let me know so that I stop going, am I live? Am I not live? While I try and find myself on Facebook, then please just give me a, a shout and I will be here. Okay, perfect. Hey, Amanda. How are you, my love? I think I've also just forgot to, forgotten to turn my phone off and vibrate, so I will do that right now so that you don't all have to listen to my phone vibrating while, like, my mum's trying to call me or something. Because <laughs> that's always a bit embarrassing. Hey, Nicola. Even though my mum is, like, now famous. I, I told a story about my mum on my business page, and everyone's like, oh, my goodness, your mum is, is a legend. <laughs> Thanks, Marcy. I, this is my gym gear. This is my gym gear that Sam bought for me, so I will blame my cleavage on Sam. <laughs> that man. Okay, perfect. So, I am not going to keep you massively long today, um, but I really want to give you some actionable trainings this week around the whole no pitches bitches um, hashtag. I don't usually say bitches. I don't know whether it's me, but I'm like, I don't usually say it, but it rhymes with pitches, so I'm, I'm kind of okay with it in this context, right? And today, what I want to talk about really is about the importance of, of building a tribe, okay? Um... <laughs> Boobs are looking great. Okay, I, I'm I'm proud of them today. I'm like the girls are doing well. <laughs> um, but yeah, so <clears throat> what I want to talk about today is the importance of building your tribe, because the one thing that I took away from yesterday, apart from the fact that all of you are incredible and I have an incredible tribe and an incredible community, um, because honestly, like it, it was really for me, it was it was really hard yesterday to to put the post up that I did on my business page and actually the lovely Rebecca Bolton messaged me and was like Jess you've you've put this post on your business page did you mean to do it and I was like ah and it was really scary and it was really really tough because it was a tough topic and it was really tough to be transparent outside of the dossies which is where I normally um kind of post that kind of stuff about what actually happens in the industry hey Joyce Joycey thumbs up um so I learned that actually I had I have an incredible tribe and I you know I'm so grateful to everybody that took the time to kind of read the post and to comment on it and I showed my mum the comments I screenshotted them over and whatsapp them to my mum and she was just like oh this is so cool people think I'm really cool and I was like yeah <laughs> because she's my mum but she she's she is amazing and it also made me realize that actually there were a lot of things that I could learn from these people who'd come back to me and said yeah, but Jess, I can't picture a whole week in your Facebook group and, you know, that's really unfair and, you know, my life is over kind of thing and, and it's really selfish. And I think there are there are a couple of things here. One is it's never appropriate to message somebody and be rude or get personal about somebody, right? I don't always like the decisions people make. It does not mean that I yell at my bank manager when my mortgage interest payments rise. It's not his fault, right? I also don't sit there and, and you know, talk about anything personal to him. I, you know, if he screws up, then I'm entitled to, to say and to set a boundary around him not doing it again. But ultimately, we have to learn how we communicate with people online. Because just because you're an online entrepreneur, it doesn't give you leave to talk to people like shit, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is you can always learn something from the people who are giving you grief. And the thing that I learned was that after I kind of, you know, was shocked by, by the reaction, after that, I realized that actually what happened was that a lot of people were really concerned about my decision to, to remove pitching from this group for a week. Not because, you know, it's, it's anything massively different there are tons of groups out there that don't offer promotion but because they were concerned 
because their own businesses were not built on solid foundations yet because their own businesses didn't have tribes like this one. And when you remove the opportunity to pitch in a group that is highly engaged, that actually is full of people that are taking action, who are investing in themselves regularly, who are paying um, for quality content, it can be really, really difficult for those people uh, to kind of think, oh shit, there's an income stream of my business going. Now, that's not to say those people are right. You know, quite frankly, if your business is is not solidly enough built that when one person says you cannot, you know, you cannot pitch in one group for one week, that your whole bottom line and your profit falls through the floor, you have bigger concerns to worry about, quite frankly. However, it did instill in me the importance of showing people how do you actually grow a tribe on Facebook or on any platform really that actually purchase from you and that actually do stand for the same values as you and that will um, you know, bring you those leads and that revenue stream that you look for, right? Because ultimately we all wanna create community. I know a lot of people also want to create money because money pays bills and allows us to continue making impact. They're like a, a circle of, I was gonna say a vicious circle, but I don't mean vicious circle. I mean like great circle of harmony or something. You know, <laughs> I'll find a better phrase for that, but yeah. Um, Christine, I was offline yesterday and didn't realize you were getting so much slack. Screw them. <laughs> exactly, right? So what I wanna do is cover off a couple of points that I think are really, really important when you're actually building your business. And people talk about this a lot, right? We talk about the importance of building a tribe. But what does that actually mean? How do you actually do it in the first place? Because a lot of leaders are saying, we well, need to go out there, you need to post in other people's groups three to five times a day, you need to private message a bunch of people, automatically add them into their group. Um, you know, and all you really end up doing is, is really hacking a lot of people off um, and getting group owners really, really angry as well. So throw some out there because I know that whilst we might not all know the way to grow a tribe and community in the right way, we probably all have experienced something that has been done the wrong way to grow your tribe. Okay, so think about something and you can you can throw a few out in the comments because I'd love to hear, you know, the ones that you guys have experienced just for reference and research for later on. But ultimately, what are some things that people have done to you? Have they added you to a group? Have they private messaged you and told you that you'd be a great fit for their group, but they, you know, it's completely irrelevant. What are the things that you really resent? What really gets your back up when someone is trying to grow their tribe in the wrong way, okay? For me, I'll share mine. Mine is what really gets my back up, what really um, frustrates me when somebody is trying to grow their tribe but they're doing it in the wrong way is when they automatically add me to a Facebook group without my permission, then tag me in something that says, introduce yourself and tell everyone why you're here. And I'm like, well, I'm here because you just made me be here. There was no, like, there was no conversation about me joining. There was no reason for me to join. There was no, like, relationship. You just kind of yanked me over here by the hand and told me to show up, okay? Kelly, oh, pressure. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Sharon, <laughs> me and you are gonna be friends. Quick emails that aren't thought out with typos galore. Why would I do business with someone who can't smell, or can't smell, can't spell or communicate? Yeah, totally get you. Grammarly, guys, please use Grammarly. It, it just makes the whole world a lot better, right? But those are the things, you know, when we are looking at how we're building tribes, those are the kinds of things that frustrate people. You know, ultimately, we're building freedom-based businesses. And that means that people have the right to choose. We have the freedom to say, I want to be actively involved in this tribe. I want to participate in this group. I want to communicate with these kinds of people. So when we force people, when we pressure them, when we make them feel like, you know, they have to come into some group, when we are actively pulling them in without their permission or anything like that, we're forcing them, we're taking away their choice. And that doesn't go down well, right? So in order to get over that, because let's face it, we're in the online world, we all see all these shitty things every day. We, sh we see bad practices every day. 
when we need to overcome this, when we need to build our own tribes, we need to look at two things. One, do we have a purpose? Okay, and I'm not talking about, you know, necessarily a huge life purpose, because in all honesty, I'm 28. I, you know, I don't even know what my life purpose is right now. Um, or yet, I know what my mission is, but life purpose, I don't know. I still kind of wake up some days and think, maybe I'll be like the next Marie Curie. I probably won't, but I think about it, okay? Um, you know, so we've got to think about, does your group or does your community, so whether it's on Facebook or off Facebook, is it is it purpose driven? Is there a reason for people to be there? Are you telling them that they are going to learn something, that they are going to be supported in some way, that they're going to develop in some way, that they're going to get to network with specific people who share their values, who share their goals, who share their drive, characteristics, whatever that might look like, right? So that's the first thing. Is your community purpose driven when you are trying to grow your tribe on Facebook or anywhere else you've got to have a purpose behind it you can't just be like I'm just going to grow a Facebook group guys because honestly I just want to make a shed load of money and seems like Facebook way groups are kind of the best way to go about that right I love it um <laughs> Kelly I never forced I actually wanted some to leave <laughs> Susie, I hate when they ask me to connect with them and then they send me a link to their website and tell me to check it out, but don't ask about my business. Oh, one-sided. Yeah, no, that's not cool. It's kind of like when you go on a date and they're like, look how awesome I look. And you're like, thanks, I look great too. Awkward. <laughs> okay, so that's the first thing, right? You've got to have a purpose. The second thing, when you are growing your tribe, and this is the key word, right? When you are trying to grow your tribe, you have to have traffic. Now, this is where I see people go wrong, okay? Now, when we're talking about selling and when we're talking about online business or any kind of business, there are two things you need to make a sale. One is traffic, one is an offer. Now, when you're growing a business, think back to the webinar I did a couple of weeks ago. You need to have a three-pronged strategy to ensure that your business goes on and lives a big life, right? So for example, you need to grow your tribe, you need to nurture them, and then you need to sell to them. And if you do those things, you are gonna have consistent revenue. You're gonna have that consistent um, lead and revenue stream in your business, okay? Facebook groups, so your Facebook community, is part of your nurture strategy. Now, you might not have heard that before, okay? but your Facebook group is the place you nurture your tribe, right? It's not a growth strategy for your business. A growth strategy for your business is a traffic driven strategy, i.e. something that is bringing leads in, okay? So your Facebook group could, and it's a tenuous link, could be considered a growth strategy, but it isn't really. Because what you're doing when you have a Facebook group is you're actually trying to pull traffic from other places and say, hey, come into my group, learn about this, right? This is where I'm going to help you do X, Y, Z. Does this making sense to people? So what happens is that a lot of people set up a Facebook group and expect they're just going to get like 100 people in. They're just going to have all these people request to join. But that's not the reality, okay? So there are a couple of things that you want to be doing when you're looking at growing a Facebook group Obviously, you want to do the practical stuff. Set up the right tags, okay? So make sure the tags are actually relevant to your group and to the purpose of your group. So for example, Max is about to hop up, I think, and make an, make an appearance on live stream. Come on then. Um, or I'll lift him, whatever's easiest. So for example, the tags in my Facebook group are entrepreneur, women, and coaching. Because ultimately, that's what my group is about. That's what I want people, when they're searching, I want them to be searching entrepreneur, women, female entrepreneur, coaching, and I want them to be able to find this group, okay? That makes sense. So that's the first thing you can do on a practical level. The second thing on a practical level when you're looking at growing your own tribe is to look for traffic sources that people are actually qualified leads from. So traffic sources that are going to send you good people who really are a match for the purpose of your group rather than a ton of spam 
okay? I can see here, Nicola, uh, okay, Nicola's got a good question. Purpose is a big word. Can you give some examples? I think I'm making it too complicated. Yeah, the purpose of your Facebook group, honestly, like the purpose of mine is I want to help smart leaders, smart female leaders, learn to sell without sleaze in their business. That's it. I just want to make sales simple for women. And so when they come into this group, the goal and the purpose of this group is for them to network with other women who are leaders or rising leaders in their industry and learn to sell with ease. That's it. It's to network, it's to help them network, it's to help them learn, it's to help support them through that period in their business where they are finding sales difficult, where they do want to network with other people in their industry who are trying to do the same things as them. Okay, that's all this group is for. And that's why we have the live trainings, it's why we do the challenges, it's why everything in the group is focused around that goal of either helping people become well networked, become more visible, help them make sales easy, right? That's that's so it. <laughs> you make it so simple. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, it doesn't, complicated means that people don't buy. Confused minds do not buy. And I, I say this all the time and people are like, yeah, but if it's that simple, like, are people really interested? And the fact is, we're in a world where everything is so overwhelming. Everything is so difficult. It's so complicated. It's a struggle. When you make it simple for people, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, cool, I can do that too. It gives you that feeling of, yeah, actually, that's not that hard. So it makes you feel motivated. It gives you that inspiration and motivation to, to continue, okay? So just think about it. Don't, don't make it complicated. Don't make it big. Keep it really, really simple. What do you want to help people do with your Facebook group, okay? Uh, Kelly, I thought I did, but with daily posting lives and regular challenges, no engagement. This is really interesting. Okay, so this is because your Facebook group is a nurture and, and should be used as part of your nurture strategy for your business. And I'm going to talk about that a bit more tomorrow, about how you can build engagement and stuff. Today, I really want to focus on making sure you grow it with the right people. And then we look at, okay, how are you actually looking after those people in a way that makes them know, like, and trust you really quickly and also helps them understand, are they going to buy from you or not really quickly? Because generally people know just because they're not buying from you at that second doesn't mean they're not thinking, yeah, Kelly seems like a great person. When the right offer comes up, I'm going to make a purchase from her, right? People know quite quickly. So, Let's go back a couple of steps there to where are we getting this traffic from? Where are we driving this traffic to join our Facebook group? Now, honestly, when I started out, and a lot of you are probably doing this right now, when I started out, the popular thing to do was to go into other groups and to talk about, I have this group, come and join it. Now, I'm a group owner, and personally, I I don't mind that. Obviously, we're having a no pictures week, but I've never really had an issue with people sharing their group in my group as long as they've had a clear purpose behind it. Like, there's got to be a clear purpose for or something that would clearly benefit my audience to take them out of my group and, and move them over to something else. There's got to be a clear purpose. There's got to be a clear mission behind it, not just, oh, I've just put in a ton of work to get all these people in her group, and now I'm just going to be like, hey, come over to my party over here where it's much more fun. However, not all group owners are like that. Not all group owners are okay with you pitching your group in their group. And that is fair enough, okay? They've put a lot of time and energy and money into growing their group. And so it can be a bit of a smack in the face when someone's like, yeah, your group's awesome. But also I have my group, guys. You know, it's like going into someone's birthday party and being like, oh, happy birthday. And then yelling, Everybody, there's a party in my house, which is much better than the one here. Okay, you get, you get my point. So think about the group or the groups that you're engaging in. Think about the group owner and whether or not they're going to be the kinds of person that is going to want you or allow you to promote your group in theirs. And also think about, is that group filled with ideal clients that you actually want to go in your group? Vanity metrics in Facebook groups, honestly, pointless. Because 
ultimately you can fill your group with a ton of people but if they aren't the kind of people you want if they're not the kind of people you can help they're not going to buy from you anyway they are not going to be your ideal tribe okay so it's pointless having them there so think about that the second thing is that people then come to me and say but Jess if I can't pitch if I can't share that group in this group what's the point in me being in there like I'm not you know I can't promote I can't tell anybody about my group so I'm not going to get anything from it I get an awful lot of people join this group from other groups that I'm in where in all honesty I don't show up every day I show up rarely okay I'm gonna be honest I show up very rarely but when I do a, I show up and give genuine value. I don't show up and say, hey guys, I'm a sales coach. As a sales coach, I have these tips on sales. Please look at them because I'm a sales coach and they will really benefit you because that's pitchy and gross. What I will do is I'll think about something I think, actually, let's say this group is relevant to new podcasters, right? I'm launching a podcast next month. I might go into a group that's relevant to new podcasters and say, hey guys, I just launched my podcast and got 5,000, I don't know, downloads um, on the podcast. And so I thought it'd be useful to share my launch strategy with you. And I'd bullet point it and go, on day one of the launch, I did this. On day two of the launch, I did that. On day three of the launch, I did that. Right? It's genuine value. It's come from me because I've just done something and I think it's going to be valuable rather than I'm a sales coach. This is my title. This is me establishing myself as the expert. Go, go do this thing. Now, when you put a post in that is genuine value, A, gets a lot of engagement because people know genuine. They know when something's genuine and when something isn't. B, you've got to make it easy, and this is the key word, easy for people to find you. Again, go back to easy and simple. Go to, and if, if you're not sure on any of this, go across to my personal profile and you can see I've got a header photo which tells people, if you want to get free sales trainings and do X, Y, Z, click this photo and you'll go to the link and it will take you to the group. Makes it really easy for people. It's very, very visible. When people click on my profile or they hover over my picture, they immediately see that and they know where they can find me. The second thing is in my bio, the only thing that I promote is my Facebook group. I'm like, if, you, if you're an entrepreneur, you want to learn about sales, come to my group. And there's a link there as well. So when I'm out there, on the rare occasions I am out there giving value in Facebook groups, people are making, or I'm making it really easy for people to come across and join my group because it's super, super simple. Okay, does that make sense? It's really easy for them to find me, really easy for them to find my group. I've just given them a ton of value without expectation. Why would they not want to associate with me as a person? That's the third thing. When you are out there and you're trying to grow your group in other groups that you can't promote, please think about how you are showing up. Lorraine, it's in the bio that I've written. It's not in the links to Facebook pages. It's you can actually write a little um, you can actually write a little bio and that's where it is in there. Um, but yeah, so you've got to think about how you are showing up in that group. Uh, Grim, I'm working on making things super simple. Good, good, I love it. <laughs> simple is good. Great advice, Jess. Thanks, Liz. But this is it, right? So you've got to make it really simple. So when you're in these groups where you can't promote, you must start thinking about how are you actually showing up? Because if you're showing up as somebody who engages often, but always is using thinly veiled pitches, people don't want to join your group because they're like, oh shit, I'm going to join her group and all she's going to do is spam me with a bunch of stuff that I may want, but probably won't right at the start, okay? So you've got to be thinking about how are you actually showing up? Are you showing up and giving genuine value? Like the example I just said. Ah, oh, thanks, Sarah. I love you. Um, I said that really weirdly. I meant Sarah and I was just like, fucking hell, <laughs> voice gone. Um, but yeah, so are you showing up? Are you giving genuine value without expectation? Or are you showing up and being like, Hey guys, and every every thread you comment, oh hey, I have this new program that's doing that. I have I have this new, you know, online course that's doing that. I have this new, you know, whatever that that talks about this or teaches that. Because when you keep dropping in, it's fine to like drop it in once or twice, but when you keep going on about it, a it's boring. People drown it out. They're like, I don't care anymore. 
don't care about your course, don't care about your online program, no matter how great it is, because they tune it out. Secondly, people go, hmm, oh, that doesn't feel good. I don't feel good when people, you know, if I go out of my way to introduce myself in a group or if I go out of my way to, you know, ask a question and someone comes back and their response is, yeah, tiny bit of value. I also teach that in my course. I'm like, oh, right. You didn't want to share the value for the group or, you know, the old private message me and, and I'll talk to you about it. I'm like, no, just just share the value with the group. Because the likelihood is that when people do share the value with the group, unapologetically and freely, what happens is they actually want other people, not just me, they don't just PM me and I go, oh cool, you're great, and buy from them. Other people go, shit, that information's gold. I'm gonna buy from her, right? Think about how you are showing up. How are you showing up? Are you showing up as somebody that people want to associate with? that people potentially want to buy from later on, that's someone that gives value, that sits in integrity? Or are you showing up as somebody who is constantly leveraging or trying to leverage somebody else's comments, threads, groups for pitching? Because if you are, it's not going to work. It's not a sustainable model. And that's why, maybe I haven't been clear about this in the past, but this is why the posting three to five times a day in a Facebook group doesn't work. Because in order to generate sustainable income from any platform, you have to have a solid tribe. So if your strategy is, I'm going to just, my only strategy is I'm going to leverage other people's tribes, it's not going to work for you because it's not sustainable. Okay. And I'm going to be explaining why that is tomorrow when we talk about nurture. Um, I like your Sarah voice. <laughs> Maybe I'll just call you that. I'm like, it's not your name, but I'm just going to call you anyway. <laughs> Kelly, I think I need a, so a simple social media schedule that will allow me to participate. There is a social media schedule in the Dotties for you, love. Because you're a Dottie, it's in there, so you can you can go in and check that out, and it's actually my social media scheduler. So if you want to go in and do that, or you want me to find the link for you, just shout, and I can go and do that for you this evening. Um, Jody, oh, I love this. You can also create a featured photo on your personal profile to promote your group. I have it set up on mine, learned from another person. It's simply a 500 times 500 image instead of choosing five images, basically free advertising just like your header image. Yes, and see what Jodie did there. This is a perfect example. Jodie is on the Facebook Live. Jodie rocks up, she listens to the value and comments with complete value. At no point did Jodie go, Hi, I'm an OBM and guess what, I'm awesome at what I do and because I'm awesome at what I do, I know that you can create this header photo, featured image, <laughs> right? She showed up and gave unapologetic value. It's like, hey, I can help you guys. Here you go. This is something else you could try. Awesome. That's exactly what you want to be doing, right? Um, Amanda, how you show up goes so much further than the marketing message. Yes, because how you show up in one thing is how you show up in everything. Right. So if you're somebody who shows up and gives value in one area and you are absolutely unafraid to do that and you're absolutely like, yeah, cool, I don't need to pitch. I'm confident that my value will bring the right people to me, then you're doing the right things. You know, that's how you're going to show up in everything. That's how you're going to show up when you're a group leader. That's how you're going to show up in your emails. That's what people are looking for. Um, Dotties. Yeah, absolutely, Dotties. If you, the social media calendar, what I'll do after the live, I will go in and I will pull the link from the portal for you and I'll just pop it in the um, group and you can go in and check that out because I think it's really useful. <laughs> I still use it. Um, I'm not seeing that looking at personal Facebook profile. Ah, oh, yeah, Jodie. Flag it in the group or something. If you can put a little picture in, that'd be awesome. But yeah, so those are my tips. When you're growing a group, I really want you to think about okay, what is it that I actually want to achieve from the group? What's the purpose? Where am I getting the traffic from? So, you know, you could use PR, you could be using podcasting, you could be using the fact that you're on guest expert as you are a guest expert on a telesummit, you know, you're going into other groups that are either allowing promotions or not allowing promotions, and you're showing up in a way that invites people to come over to learn more about you, to build a relationship with you and direct them into your group, okay? That's what I want you to take away from today. Super, super simple, but that honestly is the best way to grow your group. Have a purpose, send qualified, so people who've been able to experience a piece of your content, experience some value from you, 
qualified traffic over to your Facebook group by participating, by showing up, by doing something properly, right? So if you are writing an article or a guest blog, for example, at the end, you could have a call to action on that saying, hey, here's how you can join my group. You know, if you're on a podcast, you can say, hey, at the end, here's how you can join my group. OK, you'd be directing those warm traffic people over to. OK, awesome. Ah, oh, Jody, you did a screencast. Legend. Gemma, I love it when people have got their biz page linked to their personal profile so I can find the business easily. Yes. See, this is the thing. You've got to make it easier for everybody. That's all today is about. OK, grow your tribe with ease without pitching your Facebook group. You know, if you don't want to simply buy, have a purpose, tell people the purpose, make sure you show up as you want to be seen in other places and make it easy for people to find your group. OK, awesome. All right, my loves, have a wicked, wicked evening. I'm just a quick training today. Tomorrow I am going to be back. I'm going to be popping in here live, but it will be impromptu um, tomorrow because I want to do I want to talk about the nurture thing, but I'm on intensives a lot of the day. So I'm going to be popping in as and when I can. So I will be tagging people. So if you do want to be tagged in the post tomorrow, if you want to be tagged in the live training after I've done it, if you're not on their live, let me know in the comments here and I'll just make sure I go back and tag you. All right. Have a wicked evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are. And I will see you tomorrow.